While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Psalms 147. Because one thing, like we're doing, we, we do this uh, presentation, it's, it's to raise awareness that one, this Bible is our history book. It's the history book of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It doesn't yes, pertain to any other, other nation, the Bible. Yeah. The, it don't pertain to no other. Mm, went through, the curses that he just went through, the things that, all of the things that he no. went through, did that happen to anyone else? The slave on the slavery on ship. Did that have happen to any other nation? Not that I know of. Is any other nation like just go to? We really have all all of you uh, grew up in Chicago. No, I grew yeah. up down there where they picked that cotton. In like Mississippi, down there Alabama. Where they the okay. Oh, so yeah. when you go from wherever you from, and when you I go to the okay in Chicago, just how long have you been in Chicago? Uh, let me see. Oh, you've been here for a while. So when you're in Chicago, uh -huh. when you go to Inglewood, what do the community communities look like? Deteriorated. Deteriorated. Yeah. Then the lower state. Uh -huh. When you it go to like um, Georgia. when you go to uh, Evergreen. Evergreen, we say that. What is it like in Evergreen? Clean, neat, Clean, nice neat. neat. But who who lives over there? Who's predominantly in the neighborhood? When you go to Little Village, or uh, what they call South Lawndale, that's South Lawndale, right? What's going on in that community? But what are they doing? It looks a little neater than Inglewood, but do they have gangs? Yeah, they got a lot of gangs. Do they kill each other? Yeah. Is that a good thing? I'm saying, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Bad, bad, because but those are the things that go on in our community. Not saying that it doesn't go on in the Caucasian communities with, yeah, with crime right. and stuff like that, but when you look at our communities, uh -huh. as soon as you cross the you threshold, it. it's like, wait a minute, am I still in the same city? <laughs> right. And it only, well, no matter when you, if you go down south, it's the same thing. Absolutely. You go to New York, same thing. You go to LA, you go to UK, Atlanta. wherever we at is downtrodden. That's what he, what he was bringing out, where Deuteronomy 28 and 16 said, curse shalt thou be in the city, mm -hmm. and curse shalt thou be in the field. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not common that you hear, hear these things. That's why you was like, wait, what? It's just the black, Hispanic, Native Americans. But when you read the Bible from, from Genesis to Revelation, when you actually read the attributes of the Israelites, it only fits us. It only points to us, the things that happen to us over the course of time, like the slave ships, the uh, he brought out about the food and the water, it we the ones that suffer from those things. And, it, and you all, uh, I'm young, I'm 39. I haven't, I've seen a little bit of something, but you all seen way more than I've seen. And a lot, all of the things y'all seen, I can guarantee you, a, major, a vast majority of it has been, been pain and suffering. I grew up in Inglewood. And Inglewood today it's not. was not the same as it was when I was a kid. It's just wax worse and worse and worse. It's year by year. And the thing about it is, in Chicago, what were we on? What were we at? 71st? 74th. So if I, if, I go, if I go on Western and I travel from 71st to 59th on Western, just Western, how many churches are there? How many churches whole, am I going to see? A whole lot of uh, estimate. Whole she said a whole lot of each them. Block. Yeah. A whole lot of them. What is the church supposed to be for the community? Community. Unite. Community. It's community. A, uh, and what is, out, it, what is supposed to be? Outreach. outreach. Yeah. So meaning if it's 20, let's say it's 10 churches. I'll just say 10. It's probably more than that. Because you may, that's not including the box behind it. If it's 10 churches. Mount Pisgah Baptist Church, Mount mm -hmm. Pisgah. Listen, Baptist if it's Church, 10 churches mm -hmm. in a community, yeah. shouldn't that community get better, better over yeah, time? Sure. Correct. Yeah, Correct. But that's not happening. And it's not, the reason it's not happening is because of that, the clips we just seen. Because okay. when you go into the church, they, they, they magnify that Christ died mm -hmm. for our sins. But then 
in so many words, they basically say, because I think he asked it earlier, they basically say that we don't have to keep the laws. That's what he just said. He said we don't have to keep the laws. Yes, we do have to keep the laws. We have to keep them. We'll read that. Did you finish it? Yeah. I'm running for two. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So it says, here is the patience of the saints. So our patience, through all the suffering that we see and we encounter, our patience is knowing that Christ died for our sins, meaning he was a sacrifice for our sins. Okay. And then it says, uh, the commandments of God. We also have to keep the commandments, meaning we can't be a liar, we can't be a murderer, uh -huh. we got to keep the Sabbath day holy. We actually have to do those things. What he said in the video was, you could be a liar, you could be a, 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 a murmurer, a gossiper, and that's not going to send you to hell. Your works ain't going to send you to hell. It's when you're rejecting Jesus. So he's separating the two. That's what he said. And I grew up, I, I went to church, so I know... That's what they say, but the way that it's said, it's, it's, it's smooth to where you won't catch it if you're not really paying attention. Get um, Matthew 28 and 19. But the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal kind of life. And what is sin? Um, sin is if you're a liar. So if, if you're a liar and you go to, you're a liar, let's say you're a thief or you're a murderer, and you say you go to church, oh God, forgive me for my sin, I'm, I'm not going to murder. But then you go out and continue to be a murderer. Your you're not gonna. Your 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 asking for forgiveness was vain because you went out. You didn't change. Just like he brought out Psalms 19 and 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, and this will convert our soul. If you don't do that, you are gonna go and do the same thing. But what, what happens is a lot of our people go into church and they hear that, and even though it, because in church it's what said is like he is like he said, you lie you. You, you don't go to hell for your works. I'm going to summarize it that. That's basically what he said. But in the same breath, they'll say, you got to keep the whole Bible. So if you keep the whole Bible, that means that there's stipulations to what you have to do and have not to do to get the kingdom of heaven. But read that real quick. I, I, see, you. I see you. The book of Matthew, chapter 28 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So that first part, when he says go and teach all nations, uh -huh. I'm going to just briefly go to hold that, Deuteronomy 4 and 27. So he said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Uh -huh. What happened to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans over the course of history? What scattered. happened to us? We were scattered. So, where, so since we were scattered, where are we? Everywhere. We everywhere. We among all nations. And I'm going to read what you just said out the Bible. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4 and verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among all among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. So the Israelites were scattered amongst all the nations, and what do we call? The minority. So we scattered among all nations. That's why when you go back, go back to Matthew 28, read that again. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Why? Because the Israelites is in all nations. Read. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So this is Christ speaking because when you look in your Bible it's in the red. So Christ said go and teach all nations. And it says teaching them what? To observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. What did Christ say? teach when he was walking on earth? What was he commanding the, the people? Go to Matthew 5. Because when Christ was walking the earth, mm -hmm. was, the, was the New Testament written? No. So what was he teaching them? But, uh, that, 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 he read well, in 28, 19, mm -hmm. Christ taught that, but he was teaching his disciples, right? Yeah, you know? he was teaching his disciples, but he was moving around teaching the nation of Israel that was around was whatever city, city he went to. He, he was, was going from city, city to city. city. Right. City he was going to city, city to city and teaching. Yeah, disciples, right? Like I said, yeah. Right. Yeah. But he was teaching. It wasn't just the 12 apostles. No, no, was I know. You know but that. We are, the, was, yeah. But disciples. read that. So, what the, so he said teaching them. Read it again in 2819. 
Go ye there, verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So, so Christ basically said, continue teaching what I was teaching. Mm -hmm. Them up to, to observe all the things that I have commanded you. And can I go to, was that it on that? Um, and lo, I am with you always, uh, even yeah. until the end to, of the world. So now go to, we now we at the last, we in the last days. Since he died, we in the last days started. So we're closer to that time where time is about to be up. Yeah. So go to that Matthew yeah. 5, 27. You want to do, okay. Or, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse oh, yeah, 17, 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. So Christ is saying, so he said, you heard, mm -hmm. basically said, you heard from Moses that thou shalt not commit adultery. Yeah. Read. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So what did Christ teach us? <clears throat> he taught us the commandments. He just expounded on it because he said in the Old Testament, it says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Now, he said, he, if, you, if you look at a woman mm -hmm. with lust after her, you already committed adultery. Mm -hmm. So, if anything, he made it harder. Made it he made it exactly, he made it plain. He magnified the law. Mm -hmm. He didn't come and do away with it. Like he right. said in verse 17, he came to fulfill the prophecies that concerned him. That's right. Dying on the cross. Uh, yeah. Going and teaching, going and teaching. Go ahead. Um, you know, sin uh, affects everybody, but in order for you not to sin, your mind and your heart has to come together you know, as one. Okay? Because yep. your mouth, what comes out of your mouth, oh, I love Jesus, I love, but you go and do the same thing that you've been doing. Okay, so what's in your heart comes out through your mouth. Exactly. So therefore, like I say, your mouth, your heart, your heart. and your mind has to come together as one. And the one. thing about it is, is and that's how do you prayer. do that? It's not through prayer. Now, well, I'm not going to say it's not through prayer. Yeah. Prayer is a part of it. Yeah. Your but belief all, in God. All, it takes action. Yeah. Because it's, if you're a liar, you ain't going to stop lying just because. Just because. <laughs> It ain't gonna just happen overnight. No. You gonna pray to you gonna pray to the Most High and say, "Hey, God, forgive me for this lying spirit. Can you take this lying spirit away from me?" Is He just gonna be like, "And you ain't a liar no more?" No, He gonna put situations in front of you. you can't be careful, man. And now you got you you now you have to practice not lying. Like James just said, "Faith without works is dead." So. And we, because we, well, we probably go all day. Keep on going. But what he said, what, what he said in this video is false. Uh, and what he said is what leads our people astray. False teaching. Because false. Uh, get Romans six twenty three. Hmm. Because he said you can't go. He said he said you can't go to hell for sin. You go to hell for rejecting Jesus. I've heard that, that over and over. Right, read right. that. The book of Romans, chapter right, six. You walked, and up before. you walked up after I played the video, but that's what that's what he said in the video. Read that. The book of Romans, chapter six and verse twenty-three. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, what's a wage? Hmm. A payment. A payment. So it says the wages of sin is death. Payment. Right, so if you sin, that means your payment is death. Yeah, yeah. And we all got to Can I say this? And, 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 and I believe uh, personally that he's talking about um, spiritual death, which is just as bad as sleeping in my grave. So right now, right now, uh, give me that in Proverbs 16, 21. Yeah, the 21, 16. Yeah. See, because what you said, now it's, it's twofold. Now what, yeah. what we just read, it said the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. That's talking about, it's, it is spiritual. Mm -hmm. Because that really that's the death. When this body dies, our spirit is still yeah. alive. Right. So when they're saying, when they're, you're right. When it says the wages of sin is death, mm -hmm. that's talking about the second death. 
the second. Meaning, if you don't get yourself right here and start keeping the commandments of God, here. when you die, mm -hmm. if if the time is up and your spirit ain't coming back in this earth, mm -hmm. when you have an opportunity to fix it, mm -hmm. when no. when judgment day come, Done. you're gonna be judged and you're gonna be burned in the lake of fire. Done. But it's the video clip. I'm gonna keep referring to it because that's what goes on in the Christian churches in the black community. Is that they teach a message that all you have to do is believe in Jesus because He kept the commandments, so you don't have to keep it. You just gotta believe in Him. He's our righteousness. Yeah, but the Bible don't say that. You got to do something. You have. It takes action. It takes something. Well, you, I'm gonna. I got you. I got you. Read that real quick. Revelation 21 and 18. Right. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, and verse... Oh, okay, Proverbs. Yeah, Proverbs. I'm going to say Revelation. When you say Proverbs, you said it wrong. I did. Let's go ahead. Okay, the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, and verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding the shall remain... The way of remain. understanding is the Bible, the commandments. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding, read. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Meaning you, if you keep... The you don't keep the commandments, you're going to be in the congregation of the dead. Revelation 21 and 8. I, have, I ain't forget about you. The book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So all of those things are commandments. If you're an idolater, that means you're serving other gods outside of the Most High God. That's a sin. That means if you do that, you're not going to get the kingdom of heaven. You're not going to get eternal life because you're doing the exact opposite of what the Bible tells us to do. Get that in um, um, the works. You're going to judge us by our works in the book. The book the books will open. Is it 22? Revelation 22. And, and the books was open. Because he said that he said in this video uh, that you're not gonna you not you won't go to hell for your works. You go to you go to hell when you just when you reject Jesus. And it actually it's twofold, even when, even saying you reject Jesus, that's even twofold. Because what was what was, what is Christ? What does the Bible call Christ? What does the Bible call Jesus? Son of God. Son of God. What else? The Messiah. Those that's right. They, they called him the Son of God, called him the Messiah, but what else? He's God. I mean, he is the way. We're gonna read, I'm gonna read it. Read that real quick though first. The book of Revelation, chapter 20 and verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Mm -hmm. And the books were opened. Yes, and, and the books were opened. Read. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. So the books were opened. The books that was opened was the books of our life. And it says another book was opened, which is the book of life, referring to the Bible, the commandments. Read. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. It says the dead was judged by those things written in the books, the books of their lives. Read. According to their works. According to their what? Works. According to their works. What works? If you was a liar, you're going to get judged for being a liar. That's right. If you was an adulterer, a murderer, an idolater, God going to judge you for that. If you don't repent, meaning you ask for forgiveness and you actually work towards getting better. Because you're you, you going to slip. We, we all know. We have flaws. We're going to mess up sometimes. We're going to stumble. But if you stumble, fall, and be like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to stay down. I'm just going to keep sinning. It's too hard. I'm going to keep lying. No, you gave up, and you're going to be judged for that. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? I you said repent. So I we don't. We don't. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. 
So the way we get written in the book of life is actually by keeping this commandment. And that's keeping his commandments as the Israelites. That's what I wanted. Revelation 19 and 10. Because he said, you don't go to hell for sin, which is breaking the commandments, but you will go to hell for rejecting Jesus. The Bible, read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. And worship. 13. Verse 13. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. Uh -huh. And his name is called the Word of God. So Christ is the Word of God. Yeah. That's also James 1, I mean, not James, John 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. So Christ was the word of God. Yep. If Christ was the word of God, if you if you don't keep the commandments, you're rejecting Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not a believe in Jesus, but don't keep the commandments, or don't don't go your works. Because if you if you don't keep the commandments, you're rejecting Jesus, because that's what he taught. He's down the way, so he's exactly. So his, 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 him dying on the cross was a sacrifice. The only thing that Christ did away with was the sacrificial law. He, Hebrews 10 and 1. What, what is that? Uh, the, if you go back to Moses' time, <clears throat> he led the Israelites okay, to freedom. Mm -hmm. But over time, when Christ was born, okay, this is the division. So you have the Jews... Who did not accept Christ? Matter of fact, they're the ones that helped crucify him. Mm -hmm. Or they were the ones, okay, that was in power to put Christ on the cross. Although we know that he had to do that. He had to make that sacrifice mm -hmm. for the human race. But the Jews have never accepted yes, him, okay? So they lost, they lost their entitlement that God had given them as the chosen ones, okay? The Christians are the chosen ones because we have accepted Christ, okay? And they haven't. They are looking for a Messiah that conquers. They look at Jesus like he was a suffering Messiah, but what they don't know and understand, Jesus suffered, but he also conquered when, on resurrection day. And so, they so, do not so you they said, do not believe it. They so steal said, back in the time of Moses. So when you say back in the time of Moses, what do you mean? They do not accept Christ. The Jews? The Jews. All of the Jews. Most the majority of them they do not accept because Christ. When you say Christians, mm -hmm. the disciples was first called Christians. Christians, in right. Acts, the disciples were the Jews, were the Israelites. You can't, when you say you're Christian, you're saying that you're an Israelite because Christian was a derogatory term that was mm -hmm. placed on the disciples and the apostles for preaching the word. They were doing what Christ did, so it was a derogatory term. But you also but, have but what happened different over time, divisions is What happened over Israelites. time is modern-day Christianity mm -hmm. doesn't follow the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where there's a disconnect because, read that real quick what you got in Mark, because... Like what you what you said that it was the it was the Pharisees and the Sadducees that rejected Christ. The Jews didn't reject Christ. It was many that believed on him. Read that. The book of Mark, chapter eight and verse thirty one, and he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. So this let us know who he was rejected by. He was rejected by the elders, the chief priests. And that's what he They were also gotcha. Jews. Yeah, the Pharisees were yes. Jews. But all of the Jews didn't reject him. Read that. All of them did reject him, but I'm talking about the majority that still haven't accepted Christ after all these years. But the thing is... The, 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 the separation is when you look at the Bible the Bible is a record book of the Israelites mm -hmm. so from, when you read from Genesis the Apocrypha and Revelation I mean not Revelation, New Testament you're reading about the Israelites 
from all the way from the beginning to the end. So right. even when Christ came on the scene and he died, he died for the nation of Israel. He didn't die to bring in other nations. He died to bring his nation back to the Most High God. And we only got that real quick. The book of John, chapter 9 and verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. No, it's the, uh, what you look I'm looking for a way to say that uh, the Jews believed on them. You said you want to do Matthew first? Matthew 1 and 21, yeah. All right. The book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. So this is referring to Christ's birth when Christ was being born. Read. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. He shall save who? His people. Who is, his, who is Jesus' people? The Jews. Read. From their sins. So he, so Christ came to save the Jews or the Israelites from their sins. So then when he died on the cross, you got to think about it. How do we atone for our sins under Moses' law? How do we atone for our sins? Yeah, under Moses' law, how do we atone for our sins? Um... No, I'm saying how. How did we? Like when we sin, how do we how how do we uh, how do we get forgiveness for those sins? They sacrifice different animals. Sacrificed animals. Mm -hmm. So over the course of time, when you, when you look at the history of the Bible, over the course of time, we got to the point where the same thing we do today. Somebody go out there, murder their brother, then they go to church on Sunday and pay their tithes, as if it's a payment for them being in the midst of sin. What we were doing, we was doing each other wrong, we were lying, stealing, killing, and then what we would do? Go sacrifice an animal. Go church. Same thing. We'd go sacrifice the animal. So it got to a point where God pretty much said, I don't want your sacrifices. That's right. Because we was doing it, we were just doing it to do it, but still was in the midst of sin. So when it's, when Christ came, and I'm paraphrasing, it's because we, we already over the time, but I'm paraphrasing it, but Christ came to die for the nation of Israel. He came to be that sacrifice, so that way we don't have to sacrifice no more. But as, as it relates to the commandments, we still have to keep the Sabbath day holy. We still are not supposed to lie, not supposed to murder, not supposed to steal. Because when you hear, when people, when our people hear messages like we, what we just listened to, where a pastor is saying, you are not, you're not going to go to hell based on your works. Our people, the thought process, oh shoot, I can go and steal and I'm good. I just got to believe on Christ. We won't say that out of our mouth, but our actions show it. And when you look at our communities, that's what goes on. It shows that what we've been learning all our life in Christianity has did us wrong. Because you all have seen it, I, like you said earlier. Inglewood, when you were younger, ain't the same Inglewood that it is today. We, our lives just wax worse and worse and worse and worse. And it's a product of slavery. All of those things that happened to us, they, they destroyed us in the mind to where we can look at each other. I look at, I look at a brother look just like me, but I can easily just pull out a gun and shoot him. And I'm, that's, I'm killing myself. We think nothing of it. But read that, um, you holding a lot of Yes, sir. Read that. We read John 8 and 1. Read that real quick. The book of John, chapter 8 and verse 31. Then Jesus, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. So he said those, those Jews that believed on him. So that's how we know it was, it was the rulers and the elders that was rejecting them. Why? And they rejected him. Why? Because he was, he was bringing Israel, he was bringing us back to our nationality, and it was taking the power away from them. It was that's taking right. the people away from them. So the people believed on Christ. Read it. Okay, read it. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's right. right. And that the way we go to him, the way we get to the Father through him is by doing what he told us to do. Right. In verse 15. We have to keep the commandments, and we have to keep the. We have to always remember 
get um, sorry, one more. Because get um, Peter about Paul's letter. Then second his second. Because a lot of things, what happens is our people, we read Paul's letter. And Paul was a, uh, a master of the law. So he wrote things in a way where if you didn't know the law, you would get confused. You would trip up. You would choke. And that's what we have in Christianity today. They read Paul's letters and they see uncircumcision and the circumcision. And they see law. Every time the word law is there, it don't mean the whole law. It don't mean thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not kill. Read that. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, mm -hmm. and which are some things hard to be understood. When you read through Paul's letters, there are some things that's hard to be understood. Because we just read, we read Romans 6 and 23, where it plainly says the ways of sin is death. Mm -hmm. But then you'll you you read some you'll read somewhere else and I'm gonna I'm, I'm quote he will hear say uh, my name. Uh, but under nothing to, to bring it back what the point that I'm making, Paul's letters are hard to be understood. Where if you're not keeping the commandments, you're not doing what God requires you, you're not gonna understand it. If you don't know what the laws are, you're not gonna understand Paul's letters. And a lot of times what Christianity does is have people start reading the Bible in the New Testament. And they don't know. They don't know the history. They don't know nothing about the Old Testament. And then they pick up the Bible and actually go buy a Bible that only has the New Testament. And all you're reading is the New Testament. So you're missing Everything. You're missing the whole picture. Yeah, the beginning. So with that, you're bound to not understand what the Bible is talking about. Because in Paul's letters, he wrote about things that... You would choke. You would choke if you. It's like a baby trying to eat a a, 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 a decent meal. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna be able to digest it because his letters are his letters are hard when you don't connect it with the history and the laws. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to go back uh, with Paul to the conversion that happened to him on his way to Damascus. Mm -hmm. That because he was the number one killer of Christians. And he was on his way to kill more Christians when the conversion happened. Mm -hmm. And after the conversion, he became number one for Christ. Mm -hmm. And you might find it a little hard to understand, but if you go back in your Bible and start at the beginning, like I say, then you can understand Paul a little better because his name was Saul. He was right. born, the name that he was born right. with was Saul, and his conversion name was Paul. This is what I want to do, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Who is the unrighteous? The disbelievers. Hmm. He said. The disbelievers. Disbelievers. How, they, how does a person show their disbelief? When they don't keep the commandments of exactly. God. Right. That's it. Read. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. Neither fornicators. What's a fornicator? Something to do with sex, isn't it? Yeah, that's a law. That's thou shalt not commit adultery. Read. Yeah, neither that's fornicators, that's nor idolaters. Nor idolaters. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. It's the first commandment. Read. Nor adulterers. Nor adulterers, going back to fornicators. Read. Nor effeminate. Nor effeminate. Men that walk around and you can't tell if it's a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. Because they effeminate. They have you they have woman traits. They may not they may not quote unquote be um, homosexual, but they're very effeminate. They act like a woman. Read. Nor Abuses of themselves with mankind. Now that's going into the homosexual. That's an abuser of yourself with mankind. That's a woman that sleeps with women and a man that sleeps with men. Read. Nor that's thieves. also going in, into thou shalt not commit adultery. That falls under because the Ten Commandments is an umbrella for the rest of the commandments. Read. Nor thieves. Nor thieves. Thou shalt not steal. Read. Nor covetous. Nor covetous. 
meaning you, you neighbor's goods. Right. You are you covetous. You desire what somebody else has. An evil desire for something. Wife something. or a husband. Right. Read. Nor drunkards. Nor drunkards. If you were drunkard, you were always drunk. Out your mind. Not sober. That's a sin. Read. Nor revilers. Uh-huh. Nor extortioners. Extortioners is going into the that shall not bear false witness, that shall not steal. Read. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. They shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So, just referring back to that clip, the guy said you won't be, you, you won't, uh, you won't go to hell from your works. How do you tell if somebody is an adulterer? Right. What they do. By what they do, by their works. Yeah. If, if I'm gonna say, if I say somebody's an adulterer, that means. You seen someone? They did, did something. Yeah, I, I, you, you either told me, or, <laughs> no, you did I, or I caught you in the midst of adultery. You were sleeping with somebody else's wife, mm -hmm. so you were an adulterer. Oh, and the Bible just said you won't get the kingdom of God. So what? What scriptures is this guy? Is the Christian pastors? I'm gonna say and this because it's not just him. What scriptures are they reading? And that's the that's the problem with our community because a lot of times we go. And because it sounds good, we don't really listen to the content of what they're saying and compare it to the Bible and say, no, that's not what the Bible say, though. Mm -hmm. You are just the Bible. We just read in a couple of the Bible. But, you you know, will be you, judged by your works. You have two sets of laws. And we, as a people right now, we recognize man's law. But if you believe in God, you better recognize his laws, okay? The higher law, and then you have the lower laws. The lower laws of a, is of man, That's and the higher 13. laws is of God. That's wrong with, wrong These are the laws that we're supposed to keep. But yeah. if you keep the higher laws of God, yeah. you automatically keep the lower laws of man. Right. That's Romans 13. Because the, the, the laws you, just... Pardon? Why wouldn't you keep the laws of God? Why you would you God? not sin? He made and created you. Why would you not? You don't know. Right. Ignorance. Ignorance, Ignorance or Ignorance. disobedience. Because like I said, I, it's right. a lot of us can attest to it. I was devout in Christianity because I thought I was doing the right thing. But me, as a man, just, just something as simple as having my beard. I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to cut my beard as a man. I was shaving my beard, had a goatee. And that's what I was doing, but I never was shown in the Old Testament that a man is not supposed to shave his beard. When you read Leviticus 19 and uh, 17 and 21 and 5, the, the, all the years that I was in Christianity, nobody never showed me that. And that, that, that shows you the culture of Christianity is that you don't have to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Just like women wearing pants. We read that law earlier. You all have seen when you look at, it's even, I think it's on, the, on the, one of the pictures. When our foremothers was in slavery, they were picking cotton with dresses on. Yeah. Paint, women wearing pants is a new thing in the earth. That's right. It's very new. There's no such thing as women pants. That's just a decep that's deception. Yeah. But, that was a good teacher. So, Lord's will, we can set something up and come back. Um, that's all we have for right now. You all do have the flyers. I have our, we have our contact information on there, our email, website, and number. If you all have any questions for us, you can call us. I got one question, there. and I'm gonna let you go. Uh -huh. I know y'all have. What would you suggest for this group right here that's listening to what you did today to make a to repent? Well, what would you suggest? What if we thing? know we are out of order? We're not doing the thing that God has commanded us to do. Where would you say we ought to start? Something, anything. Okay. Start. He read it earlier, the brief okay. version of it, but we're going to go in detail. Go to Romans. Yeah, I mean, not Romans, 1 Kings. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 8 and verse 46. If they sin against thee, but there is no man that sinneth not. So, and, so it says, if they sin against me. First step is you have to understand that you are Israelite. Understand that we're Israelite. Yeah, that's the first step. You have to acknowledge that you are an Israelite. That you're not a Gentile. You're not black. 
You're not African American. You're Israelite. That's the first stop. That's why it says if they, because that they, when when uh, Solomon was writing this, when we reading, we're reading him referring to the nation of Israel at this time. So read. If they sin against thee, but there is no man that sinneth not. We know that the nation of Israel sinned against God. We know because we yeah, we looking at each other right now. We looking at ourselves in captivity. Read. And thou be angry with them, uh -huh. and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, so, far or near. So the Most High God was angry with the nation of Israel, and he sent them to the land of the enemies, far and near. That's showing that, that's us, that's going back to the slave ships, that's going back to us being sold on the auction blocks. Read. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. It says, yet, if they shall bethink themselves. That's, now, this is showing us more so what that bethink is. I mean, not think, but that, who that they is. Because bethink, it's an old word, but it means to remember. It says that they remember, them, remember themselves. So that shows that the Israelites at one point in time will forget who they were. Mm -hmm. So now it's saying this is what we see. We have to remember who we are. We have to understand we are the Israelites. That's the first step. Read. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captives and repent. So we remember who we are in the land that we were carried captive. We, us, we were carried captive here. Our four, forefathers, foremothers were brought to here to America. So here we acknowledge that we are the Israelites based on the curses, the things that he brought out earlier. We see the slave ships. We see all those things happening because we broke God's commandments. So we understand, wait a minute. These things happen to us as a people. We are the Israelites. We remember who we are and we see it and repent. Read. And make supplication unto thee. So we repent. So that repentance is you feel remorse for the fact that you sinned. You broke God's commandment. Whether you was a liar, you was a thief, a woman wearing pants, whatever though, whatever it is that that you know you've done, it says what? And make supplication unto thee uh -huh. in, in the land of them that carry them captives. So then you pray to the Most High for forgiveness. Read. Say, we have sinned and have done perversely and have committed wickedness. So you, you have to understand that no matter how small we think the sin is, we done perversely. And you have to acknowledge that. That, hey, okay, I was a... What's, what's something that I would consider small? Christianity. They go to church. Well, Sunday. you know what? I use Christianity. I use just real quick. You have some levels of Christianity where a person may go, they may have been a drug dealer, and they may start going to the church, and they may change. They may stop selling drugs. They may get married. They may stop uh, hoeing out their women. So they may go to the church, and it's and it, on the surface, it's like, okay, my life is better, but they still not keeping the commandments. That's a deception, because you're going to the church, you don't know you're an Israelite, and because you got married or something like that, you're still not keeping the law. Something, something that's small, like I mentioned earlier, is not, keep, not a man not putting a beard on his face, a woman wearing pants. You're still in the midst of sin, but because your life has improved, you're fooled to think that you're on the right side of the fence. Even those things, you got to understand, no, we've done perversely because I went, Christianity is a false god. Christianity is idolatry because mm -hmm. Christianity pushes a white image of Jesus when you don't find that in the Bible. Read. Verse 48. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul and the land of their enemies which led them away captive. So that's going further into their repentance. You return unto the Lord, meaning you read the whole Bible and you read it to understand it and apply it. And all that getting done. Right. Read. And pray unto thee toward their land. And when we pray, we pray towards our land. Our land is Jerusalem. Get that in uh, Galatians 4 and 26. Jerusalem is the land that the Most High God chose. So that's what we pray towards. And for us, we in America, it's towards the east. Is that, mm -hmm. that one? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lake, Sh Oakland. Lake Shore Drive. Right, so we pray towards the east, which is towards Jerusalem. Uh, read. The book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 26. 
But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So our land is Jerusalem. Go back to the first king. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul. So in the next, it says, return unto thee with all your heart and with all your soul. So everything about us, we have to return. Okay, you wake up in the morning, you send in a prayer. You're studying the Bible to apply it. You're studying to apply it. You're not studying just so you can know some scriptures and tell somebody, and then but you, you're going and still doing evil, you still sin. No, you have to actually apply it. Read. In the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, uh -huh. and pray unto thee toward their land, uh -huh. which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Uh -huh. Then hear thy prayer and their supplication in heaven. So, and then that's another that's another heavy point. Get that and hold that. Get John thirty one because that's another thing. Because if you're not keeping the commandments, you can pray until your face turns blue, and the Most High God will not hear you. And that's what he's saying. He said, because remember, what we just read, it said, remember who you are. Repent. Repent, meaning you forsake your sins. You feel bad for the fact that you sinned against God, and you return to him with all your heart and your mind and your soul, meaning you keep the commandments. You return to keeping the commandments. And then it says, and then read that in John 9, 31. Because before the end, if you ain't do none of that, if you don't do none of those things, read that. The book of John, chapter 9 and verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So you have to be doing the commandments to be a worshiper of God. If you're still keeping Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter and New Year's Day, you're not a worshiper of God. You're a worshiper of Satan. Because none of the, none of the Christmas, you don't find it in the Bible. You don't find it in the Bible where it tells us to keep that day holy. We have holy days in the Bible, but when you look at Christianity, they don't even, you can say, well, what's the Feast of Tabernacles? Never heard of it. What's Passover? Uh, that's, that's when Christ died on the cross. We, we, don't know the, we don't know the holy days that God gave us. So if you're keeping those days, you're in the midst of sin. You're in the midst of idolatry. And God don't hear your prayers. Uh, go back. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, and verse 49. Then hear thou prayer. And, and, wait, and I, I just want to expound because what happens is a lot of times, um, like Halloween just passed. I was, I was at somebody's house. And because I do, I do work. I work on people's houses. I was working, and a lady, trick-or-treaters would come into the door. So if you don't celebrate Halloween... You're not passing out candy, and you're not taking your children to go get candy. Because if you do it, you're celebrating the day. I don't care how what you say. What our people do a lot of times is we try to say, you know what? I don't celebrate Halloween. It's a love day. I'm giving out candy. I'm I'm giving some cherry. I'm showing some charity. Some love. No, you're you're celebrating the holiday because you're participating in it. So when the Bible says you're a worshiper of God, that means you do what He say. If he don't say it, you don't do it. Right. He, you don't. When you find, you, well, you can find Christmas in the Bible, but it's not in the Bible for you to celebrate it. Right. It's in Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah ten and one, yeah. one through five. It talks about how it's uh, idolatrous. Um, go back to first thing. Verse forty nine. Then hear thou prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them who carry them captive, that they may have compassion on them. So all of that, so just summarizing what we just read, to, to answer your question just plainly, but it's first Kings with that eight and 46, 40, 46 through what? You can go like start 41. at 44, 44 through 52. 44 through 52. Mm -hmm. First, first Kings, Kings what? First Kings, Kings 8. 8. 46, 46 through 52. 46 to 52. Gotcha. Um, go back to um, Jeremiah where it talks about Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's coming up. Actually, it was a pagan holiday. No, it's not, it's not, it, it's not, it was, it is a pagan holiday. Yeah, and the Christians wanted to be. That's how it was. Let's read it real quick. But, but 
But make for swap move that because I don't know we bound to go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> to answer your question, just the, what we just read, the the I think what was repeat your question. Do you I, I'm I'm looking at Jeremiah, what right. it says in that. Bible. No, I'm talking about the question that you originally asked. You asked what what would I suggest you all do? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. to to turn it around. Right. If so, we were interested in right. doing better, right. If you so would, the first, based so the on first, what you've taught us. Right. Today. So we just read in First Kings eight, verse forty-six to fifty-two, summarized. First, we must repent, repent as Israel. All right. Repent, knowing that you are Israelite. Repent, knowing that I'm an Israelite. Right. How do I know I'm an Israelite? You said. Uh, by studying, for one, you can go through the flyer, but studying, you learn that you're an Israelite by looking at Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to ask you, and, and wow, this could go on and on, but uh, Israelites, are they all black? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. People of color, would you say like you that? You say it like that. Yeah, okay. But we could, we different shades. We, we, yeah. don't, we really don't say yeah. color because yeah. when you say Hispanic, a lot of Hispanic brothers are very, very light, where Some are lighter yeah. than him. Yeah. Where they can pass and they, from appearance wise they look but God like they look at color, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's just. So it's the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans according to their father. Whoever the fuck the father was a so called black man, you're an Israelite. But if the father is a so called but, white um, man, then no, you're not an Israelite. Yeah. See, we we got a lot of teaching on that. Yeah. That's not that. Well, we want to hear about you. Yeah, I want to hear that, but, but hearing what you were saying about we're Israelites, mm -hmm. it, we're being taught in what well, I've heard that um, God does not look at the color of your skin as being Israelite black, being all black. You know, the color mm -hmm. of your skin is because you dark color or whatever. Right. I mean, because yeah, of the yeah. rich region where you were born and all that back in. I mean, it's not this. Yeah. You know what I'm the, the thing about it is, it's not just the reason. color of your skin. It's it not just that. the color of your skin. Yeah, but yeah. you can so be. A lot of people look at it. Somebody can be light skin. Light skin yes, yes, and yes, yes. look like they're a so-called Caucasian and be black or yeah, be an Israelite. Yeah. So when we say yeah. when we say black, we understand that it's not talking about we're not talking about the color. Yeah, of your some skin. of us understand, but like I said, but we've when you been say taught black, stuff. The thing about it is, it's. Your nationality, being an Israelite, you are an Israelite because you fit the curses in Deuteronomy 28. When you read oh. Deuteronomy 28 to 15 to 68, mm -hmm. if you can look at your, if you do the little history that you know, mm -hmm. if you can look at it and say, hey, the this is that, the curses. Yeah. Of, hey, you know what? This is happening because huh? when you read Deuteronomy 28, what is it, 46? Mm -hmm. Read that real quick. Yes, and then we're gonna read Jeremiah saying, I don't know. Yeah, I know I got it. Yeah. I'll read that 46 book. specific. Well, the book of yeah. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 46. Not 40. Is it 47? Which one? Is the science 46. Science. Joy science. Right, right, right. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So and it's for, talking about the curses. The day is the curses. Read. And for a wonder. So it says the curses are going to be upon thee for a sign. I think you brought that earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was when here. You, when you when a sign. A, you know a sign by, like, uh, like he said, I think he said the name, the name of the facility is Marquette. Marquette. Yeah, Marquette Park. Yeah. Marquette Park. We know we hear about a sign that's on the building. Mm -hmm. So when you see these curses, whoever, yeah, whatever experience. people so, you see going through these curses, those are the Israelites. I have experience. Though. Right. Those are the Israelites. So that's how we know that we are the Israelites because when you read through the whole, when you read through it, we the only ones that's going through this stuff. We the only one be at the bottom of the society no matter where we go. Yeah, you have your you have the select few to get they uh, get famous, get some money, all of that. But when you look at us as a nation of people, we fit the curse. We are cursed people as a as a nation of people. Not talking about a small group here or a small group there. As a nation, as a whole, when you look at the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we're cursed. When we, we mention the Native Americans, how are they on reservations in their own land? That's a curse. Uh, get that in Jeremiah 10. We're going to wrap up. We're going to wrap up after Yeah, I just want to hear that Christmas part. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, uh -huh. and, be and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, mm -hmm. 
for the heathen are dismayed at them. I'm talking about the sun, the moon, the stars, because the heathen worship the sun, moon, and stars. Read. Verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain. Uh -huh. For one cut of the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen so, with the axe. So what holiday do you cut a tree out of the forest? Christmas. The axe? Christmas. Right. Read. Verse 4. They deck it with silver and gold mm, and so fasten it. With nails and with hammers. They deck it with silver and gold. What's that song? I don't even want to say it because it's stuck in my head. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> but they, they, said yeah, they, they, they cut a tree out the woods with an axe and then they deck it with silver and gold. Christmas Christmas tinsels. Christmas. That's, that's what it describes. Christmas tree. And then it said it started off. Follow what does it say? Follow not the customs of the heathen. Learn oh. not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen. Letting us know that it's a heathenish custom. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. Christmas is vain. That's this is referring to Christmas, because what happens? You get, if you get a live tree, you got you got the tree stand. They got the nails that screw in and hold it, that hold it up right, and then you put all them bells and and lights and all of that on it. That's what the that's what Jeremiah is describing. Mm -hmm. So that's Christmas. That's the, the only way you see Christmas. And when you see it, it says, don't learn this way. So we're not supposed to keep that holiday. So okay. it has nothing to do with the virgin birth. Christmas. Nope. And that's another topic. Yeah. So I know, I'm just saying. That's a whole another <laughs> well, virgin I'm birth. I'm just saying, that's a, we could go on and on and on, but right. I'm just saying how, people, how society has wrapped it up, if you will. Right. So that's a whole it had nothing to do with when Christ was born. It had nothing to do with Christ was born. Because when Christ was born, Ruby, you know something. I know. Look, I'm just Christ, bringing it out. Listen, just, listen, listen, was, I, you know what? Right. I, I've been there. I, it, let me say it like this. What you're doing right now is Bible. That's right. And what we need is Bible. Exactly. That's the only way we're going to get to heaven. I, I'm, I'm talking about me. That's only, I know that. So what I'm saying is what can, I guess I'm talking about me, what could I do in my daily walk with Christ? And I guess I'd have to answer that myself. But um, like you all are group, to bring this to light in our community because it's about getting the word out here. Right now, because of the time, you right. know what I'm saying. Christ is coming back, so we need to. And I've been, I, I'm struggling with this. Y'all can hear me. I'm struggling with this. What more can I do other than live it on a daily basis in front of the people that are in my sphere? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. According to the words of God, what He has already written down and gave us and in other words, you know what? He he told us what to do. Right. So what we doing going back like we come? How's that song that I come too far to turn around or something like that? Why are we with our little minds going back and God has already put it in his word in this book? What we need to do in order to come back home to him. And so I'm struggling with this so y'all can know that. Every, everybody gonna, that's, that sees and they're hears not gonna the Bible, receive it, but everybody's I, it, not going to receive it. But that's not my job for right, them to receive it. My job, job is to tell it. That's, and that's your job. Go ye therefore what y'all read, right? Yeah, yeah, and preach, the teach the Bible. Teach right. the whatever. That's, what, that's, that's, that's your 20. job. You learn it and you teach it. Teach. You walk it, you be an example. And live it. That's all you can do. Those that see it and notice, hey, you know what? She, she's different. She's changing. I like that. Um, they're going to draw to your spirit because they see the Bible and they're going to ask questions. They're going to learn. Then you, you, you drew somebody first and foremost to show them, okay, you're an Israelite and you have to keep the commandments. And they learn that and now they start doing it. Everybody's not going to receive it. Yeah, Everybody because people don't it. accept what you're saying. I'm an Israelite. Yeah. They don't want to. People. So they don't want to hear it. I, all my life I've heard I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. 
So being an Israelite, and I know that those are God's chosen people, you know. It's um, a lot of this, in, in some, in the Israel, sometimes Israel is I, we, can, we, we, because we've been so broken, a lot of times when we hear that, it's no, nah, I can't be, I can't be God's chosen people because of the stuff I've been through. I've been through pain. He God, so God will do this to His people, and that's that's what the He will allow that's it. That's one of just for the record. He will one, allow right, it that's one of the through. that's one of the reasons that some people don't want to hear it. Well, then it's, sometimes it's a it's it's a shocker because, like you said, we've heard we're Christian, we've heard we're Gentiles, we heard all of that, but then. And we read the Bible like it's some other people. And now you come telling me I'm an Israelite. And it's like, it's, <laughs> I'm it's, like what? so it's a shock factor. Yeah. To some, it's a shock factor to say, wait, whoa, yeah. like, wait a minute. You said, what? Wait, you want slavery and ship? That's in the Bible? It's a shock yeah. factor where they're going to look. Some people are going to look and say, so you know see. what? Let me look at that. Let me let me look more into that because I never heard that. I didn't know that was in the Bible. And some people are going to look at it. It's a shock factor of, no, no, not my Jesus. No. Keep the laws. No, we ain't got. And some some people are gonna reject it outright in the front. Whether it's so that's okay. It, it, so that's and that's we can't get everybody. About that. There's nothing you can do about it. My job is to tell it. Your job yeah. is to tell it. All right, then. And I'll that's it. As long as you tell it, you're walking right. here, boy. Tell it right. 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 Tell it you get straight to the point where it says. Am I right? Take it. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, and verse 17. Verse 11. And go, get thee to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Our job is to tell them. Yeah. yeah. We, we, our job is to tell the truth. Just tell it. The truth will make you free. I know that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Example, we I talked about Paul. What Paul do? Hallelujah. Paul was stoned to death. Yeah. And what did he do? He got back up and continued. He had to stay with That's it. our yes. job. Yeah. So everybody's not going to receive it. Because he was changed. Because it goes against tradition. Yeah. It goes against the tradition yeah. of your of a lot of our people's yeah. elders. And they trust in man more than they trust yeah. in God. And when we bring this out, it, it, so you call him my pastor a lot. You call him my uncle a yeah, liar, yeah. and it's automatically attack mode. Hey, hey, officer, yeah. they, they call that cognitive genesis because your beliefs have now been challenged. Right. And with your beliefs challenged, it, it causes you to look at yourself. Yeah. And fear right now takes hold to you yeah. because a decision has to be made. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of people are afraid of change, so they would rather stay in that comfort, that comfort zone. Right. Where like, nah. Yep. And that's the majority of the people. They're, they're going to take that route. Yep. And it's decision time right yep. now. You got to make it a choice. It's decision time. You know, and then the thing about Everybody. it, most people that hear it, they Everybody. hear it, and they know that it's the right thing. They know that it's the truth because we're reading it out of the Bible. But a, a lot of people, they love, they love the pleasures. Better more than God. God. They love Christmas more than they love yeah. God. So they are choosing yeah. the Christmas for the kids. Yeah. No, but it's pagan. It got nothing to do with God. God. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation.